College of Agriculture, Engineering and Sciences, followed by the Provost College of Liberal Studies, the Provost College of Management and Social Sciences, the Provost College of Postgraduate Studies, the Provost College of Law and Chairman Committee of Provost and Academic Directors, the University Librarian, the University Bossa, the University Registrar, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Bowen University, our distinguished inaugural lecturer for today, and last but by no means least, the Vice Chancellor, Bowen University, Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, as we remain standing, we'll take the national anthem. Anthem. take our seats. I'll now invite the Reverend Professor Oladele to lead us in a word of prayer. Our Lord and our God, we give you praise. We adore you and we give you all the glory. Thank you for this grace that you've given us to be in your presence and to gather so that we will have scope for contribution to knowledge towards solving the problem of the human race. We give you praise for the institution. We thank you for the gift of intellect, especially that which you bestowed on the inaugural lecturer of today. Bless you for joining messes and the time and space that you've given us to be here to be partakers of this divine venture. Take the glory, O Lord, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We ask, Father, that you take preeminence and that you lead us all through this process so that your name will be glorified and all of us will be blessed in turn in the name of Jesus. Give our lecturer divine unction and let, this, let us speak 
as unto you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. You may please be seated. As you're sitting down with the greatest smile you can muster to your left, to your right, wish someone a happy new year. And ask them how much they sell well in their locality. All right. Um, very quickly, time is not on our side. I'd like to welcome all of you that have made the journey from far and near, um, from the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, from the Nigerian Economic Society, from the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria, and um, from all other professional bodies. In due time, we'll recognize all of you. You're all welcome in Jesus' name. Permit me to invite the chairman for the opening remarks. Um, if people from UI do not clap, I expect Bowen Knights especially to put their hands together for the Vice Chancellor, Professor Jonathan Oyebamiji Babalola. The Deputy Vice Chancellor, the Registrar, the Bossa, the Liberian, the inaugural lecturer of today, Provost of Colleges, and my fathers in academics and my fathers in the Lord. This is, my, this is the first inaugural lecture I'll be presiding over here in Bowen University. And it happens to be a very special one. And that is because the person who will be presenting the lecture is the spouse of my own ogre. <laughs> so we welcome Professor Adeni Kiju to Bowen University. I think I also saw Professor Ayuade. You are welcome, sir. Um, inaugural lecture is actually not something to be taken light. It has to be done to fulfill all righteousness. When somebody gets born again, he could just continue his life without anything. But Jesus Christ commanded, after that, let him go for baptism. People will witness and say, okay, actually this one has become one of them. So it's like inducting somebody to come into the body of professors. The question you ask is, if somebody doesn't give inaugural lecture, does he mean he's not a professor? Yes, he's one. But it's not one that is yet inaugurated. When you have a king and he's not crowned and installed, oh, he has been elected a king, but not yet crowned and installed. The thief on the cross, he died, you know, he, he made confession that day. Jesus Christ said, you meet him in paradise. Yes, but once you have the opportunity, it is one that we all need to give. And by God's grace, in Bowen University, we will continue in this, in this tradition. So I welcome all of you to this inaugural lecture, the first this year. And I want to congratulate the inaugural lecturer for making us proud, for, making, for bringing this day to be. Thank you and God bless you. So I, I know that you are going to hear a lot. Act of God or looking inward. So which way? God bless you as you will listen to her later. If you're putting your hands together, you can make it better. Um, I apologize for not coming as soon as the vice chancellor was done. I was planning my own inaugural lecture outside. Um, you're all invited immediately after this. I don't know what I'll be speaking on, which is the surprise, because all of us will be shocked at the same time. All right, we'll now take the citation of our inaugural lecturer. May I please request that she stands and remain standing. Thank you. This is the profile of Professor Olainka Omolara Adenikinju. 
Olainka Omolara Adenikinju was born on June 16, 1969 at Ibadan to the family of Professor Christopher Sunday Ola and Mrs. Helen Adebohali Ola. She attended All Saints Church School Jericho Ibadan for her primary education and the International School University of Ibadan for her secondary school from 1979 to 1984. She gained admission to the University of Ibadan in 1984 to study religious studies because the economics degree started at the 200 level at that time and later transferred to the Department of Economics in 1985. She graduated in 1988 with the BSc degree in economics and proceeded for her MSc degree in project analysis, finance and investment at the University of York, United Kingdom after having fulfilled the National Youth Service in 1989. She completed the MSc in 1990 and returned to Nigeria in 1992 to commence her PhD in the Department of Economics, University of Ibadan. She won part scholarship for her MSc degree in Project Analysis, Finance and Investment awarded by the University of York, United Kingdom and the PhD thesis grant awarded by the African Economic Research Consortium, Kenya. Ola Inka Adenikiju started work at the Department of Management and Accounting of Afemi Awolowo University between 1992 and 1994 as Lecturer 1, having qualified as a Chartered Accountant with the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria that same year. She worked with the Trans International Bank from 94 to 96, after which she resigned her appointment to complete her PhD in economics in the year 2002. Professor Adenikiju also worked with the external degree program of the University of Adoikiji from 97 to 2001 and the National Center for Economic Management and Administration from 2002 to 2005. She also qualified with the Chartered Institute of Taxation and was inducted in 1999. Olainka bagged the Fellowship of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria in 2004 and is an associate member of the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria. She is listed in Youth and Achievement published by the International Biographical Centre UK 1988 and is a member of the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria. Olainka Adenikiju joined the services of Bowen University in August 2005 as a senior lecturer and became a full professor in 2018. She has several publications comprising of chapters and books and articles in local and internationally acclaimed peer-reviewed journals. She has been adjunct lecturer at the Center for Petroleum Economics, Energy and Law, University of Ibadan. Professor Adenikiju has served Bowen University in many capacities she was the first female head of department of the Department of Accounting, Banking and Finance from 2005 to 2006, 2013 to 2014. She became the sub dean of the Faculty of Social and Management Sciences between 2008 and 2013. Among other notable achievements during her tenure in office, she facilitated the signing of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, MCATI MOU, as well as the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants ACCA Exemption Certificate for the University. She was head Department of Economics between 2006 and 2008 and 2013 and 2014 and also 2019 to January 2023. The PhD program in Accounting and Economics took off successfully during her tenure as head of department and program coordinator. She also facilitated the discussion on Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers examination for the economics program. She was chair, Bowen University Welfare and Entertainment Committee between 2009 and 2013, Scholarship Prizes and Awards Committee between 2019 and 2021, Senate Estimate Committee 2021, College Quality Assurance Committee member, Board of Postgraduate College 2019, Strategic Planning Committee 2019, Ventures Board 2017 to 2020, and Staff Disciplinary Committee from 2022 till date. Olainka Adenikiju has the following scholarships and fellowships Western Scholar, International Monetary Fund, Washington, D.C., USA, March to April 2006, African Economic Research Consortium, Research Grants 96, 97, 2001, and 2012. External Examiner to Ajay Crowther University, Oyo, Nigeria, between 2013 and 2018. External Assessor, Covenant University, Ota, 2017. External Assessor, Babcock University, Ilishan Remo, 2016. 
external examiner for MSc and PhD oral examinations, Obafemi Aulawa University from 2016 till date, assessor for the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria in strategic financial management paper between 2013 and 2019, examiner for the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria in strategic financial management 2014. Distinguished Persons Award of the Society for Women Accountants of Nigeria, SWAN 2020, Bowen University Research Grant for Research on the Effects of COVID-19 2021, Judge Assessor, Association of Nigerian Taxation Students Maiden National Essay Competition 2023, Judge and Assessor, Association of Nigerian Taxation Students Maiden National Essay Competition in 2023. Professor Olainka Omolara Adenikiju is a reviewer for Research in Globalization 2020 till date, a Scopus Index Journal. Olainka Adenikiju is a life member of the Nigerian Economic Society, a member of the Nigerian Statistical Association, a member of the Nigerian Association of Energy Economics, a member of the International Association for Energy Economics, a member of the Education and Publicity Committee, Ibadan and District Society of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, member, Students Education and Training Committee of ICANN, ex-official member, Ibadan and District Society of the Chartered Institute of Taxation, chairperson, Society for Women in Taxation, Ibadan chapter between 2013 and 2015. She is the editor, Tax Info Magazine, a publication of the Ibadan and District Society of the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria. She was a member of the ICAN Committee of Association of Vice Chancellors between 2016 and 2017, a member of the Membership Training Committee of ICAN in 2016, and a member of the Students Investigation Committee of ICAN between 2022 and 2023. Professor Olainka Adenikiju is married to Professor Adeola Adenikiju, a professor of energy economics at the University of Ibadan and the current president of the Nigerian Economic Society and their union is blessed with children. Ladies and gentlemen, with a stand innovation, please welcome Professor Olainka Omolara Adenikindu. Distinguished professors, members of Senate, program coordinators, my Lord spiritual and temporal, scholars, staff and students of Bowen University, gentlemen of the press, distinguished guests, my esteemed family members, ladies and gentlemen. I am deeply grateful to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and everyone who has played a role in my journey to becoming a professor of economics. I also appreciate every one of you who have taken time to attend this lecture, whether physically or virtually. It is with deep gratitude to God and great honor that I stand before you to present the 11th inaugural lecture of Bowen University. This is the first inaugural lecture delivered since the establishment of the economics program in 2002, when the university itself commenced academic activities. And it is also the first from the College of Management and Social Sciences. In this lecture, I intend to emphasize my contributions to research in the areas of capital structure, ownership structure, corporate governance, and what drives corporate performance of companies in Nigeria. I also highlight the main constraints to corporate performance and make recommendations on how to enhance corporate performance of firms operating in Nigeria. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, let me start with my academic journey to what I am today. I got admission to the University of Ibadan in 1984 with the aim of studying economics. I, however, had to study for one year in the Department of Religious Studies for my 100 level, as the BSc economics started only in the 200 level. I subsequently crossed to economics in my second year. Thus, most of my classmates at 200 level were those who were admitted through GCE advanced level or direct entry. 
and were much older than myself. I believe that only two of us were in the category of my age bracket at that time, out of a class of about 100 students. The Department of Religious Studies was very reluctant to release me, but I pleaded that economics was what I set out to study. I later pursued the accounting professional qualification under the guidance of my father. He felt that it was important to have a professional qualification in addition to the academic degree that economics offered. He was a lawyer as well as a practicing chartered accountant. The professional qualification was to serve as an insurance if in events economics was unable to provide food on my table. Hence, I started to write the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria ICANN professional examinations in my final year at UI. I also wrote some of the professional examinations of the Association of Chartered Certified Accountants, ACCA, while I was in the UK. My academic career is a unique one. Having come from a background where my father was a professor of law and was also a chartered accountant of repute, while my mother retired as a matron at the University College Hospital in Ibadu. My husband is a professor of energy economics at the University of Ibadu. Thus, books have always been my companion at each point in my life. I am an economist, a chartered accountant, a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, and an associate member of the Chartered Institute of Taxation, member of Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria, member International Association of Energy Economics, and the Nigerian Association of Energy Economics, NAEE, life member of the Nigerian Economic Society, amongst others. My combination of degrees, certificates, and experience has earned me seats in various departments and programs. I have had an interesting professional career, having started work as a banker in the defunct Trans International Bank. I was a lecturer at the Department of Accounting of Afemi Awolowa University, Ileife, for a brief period. I applied to the Department of Economics, then known as Economics and Business Administration, EBA, when I joined Bowen University. However, within six months of my resumption, I was asked to be in the Department of Accounting and Finance, formerly known as Accounting, Banking and Finance. During my tenure as the head of Department of Accounting, the PhD program took off successfully, but the department had accreditation for PhD, but there was no qualified staff at the time to teach and supervise. And when I moved to the economics department, we applied for accreditation for the PhD, and this was granted in year 2020. During my tenure as the head of Department of Accounting, the university secured the ACCA exemption certificate such that our students can write the professional examinations with exemptions in some subjects. Also, the Institute of Chartered Accountants signed the MCAT agreement with the university, which allowed our students to write the final examinations of ICANN and become chartered accountants in their fifth year. During my time as the head of Department of Economics, discussions were made towards our students writing the Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers examinations to enable them to obtain the CIS qualification upon graduation. The discussion is ongoing and the university should sign the MOU with the institute. The foundation for my research in economics is laid on my PhD thesis titled Capital Structure and the Risk of Corporate Failure, the case of Nigeria, which I completed in 2002 and subsequent research in the area of corporate governance and firm performance, which was funded by grants from the African Economic Research Consortium, AERC, Nairobi, Kenya. My PhD thesis evaluated the debates on capital structure, which states that the combination of debt and equity in a company's capital structure affects the firm's value, and in particular, provides a developing country's perspective to the debate. Furthermore, the study examined the implication of capital structure on the risk of corporate failure in Nigeria. My work in the area of corporate governance was considered, have considered issues relating corporate governance to ownership structure, managerial characteristics, capital structure, and performance, Adeni Kinju, 2002. This was one of the earliest empirical studies on corporate governance in Nigeria. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Financial performance is essential for the success and continuity of businesses and therefore, a good understanding of the factors that influence performance is useful so that businesses can take better decisions and improve their financial objectives. In their lifetime, companies go through various phases of good fortunes and poor performance. Is it in their stars? Or is it as a result of factors internal to the firms? Or is it an act of God? 
caused by external factors over which the company has no control over. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, an act of God are those external factors that are beyond the control of the firm. That is, what happens in the macro economy that is applicable to all firms and which is outside of their control. For instance, there are cases where the firm faces environmental opportunities that promote their performance, such as influx of migrants into the firm's environment, increasing the demand for the firm's products and reducing the cost of labor as labor supply increases beyond demand. In this case, the firms enjoy benefits in their operations that were not introduced directly by their internal operations or activities. An act of God can also work in the reverse, where the firms experiences unfavorable conditions that mitigate their efforts to promote performance. A typical example is the case in Genesis chapter 41, verses 28 to 32, where there were seven years of abundance, followed by seven years of drought, and all the land of Egypt, as well as Canaan, and across faced abundance and afterwards stagnation and drought. In the current time, it could mean the difficulties introduced by the COVID-19 pandemic and various macroeconomic challenges, such as rise in the exchange rates and interest rates, as well as rise in inputs, as well as rise in input prices, especially for the manufacturing sector in Nigeria, that depends heavily on imported inputs for production. These are examples of external factors that affect the performance of the firm and are completely outside of their control. The truth is that in spite of major external constraints, some companies have been able to do very well, delivering good returns to their owners and becoming sector leaders, while others have remained as laggards and others dropping off from official reckoning. Some companies have done very well, while others have not. So what are the drivers of corporate performance? These issues have been central to my research over the years, and these are the issues I would like to discuss at this inaugural lecture. The internal factors that influence financial performance can be broadly classified into three, revenue growth, profitability, and liquidity. While the external factors that influence performance can also be generally classified into three. First, the macroeconomic environment, which relates to growth rates of the gross domestic product, interest rates and inflation, and exchange rates and international trade. Other factors are those that are specific to the industry where the company operates, and thirdly, social and environmental factors. Other factors that interplay between internal and external which influence financial performance are the leadership or the management, human resources, corporate governance, and innovation and research and development. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, my studies have focused on internal factors, that is liquidity, talking about the mix of capital structure, and the interplay between internal and external factors that influence financial performance, that is corporate governance issues. I have organized this lecture into seven sections. Section two discusses the theories of performance and issues in corporate governance. In section three are theoretical and empirical issues in corporate governance. Section four contains the analysis of capital structure and the risk of corporate failure. Section five highlights the importance of ownership structure as it relates to performance. My contributions to scholarship and other contributions to knowledge are in section six and are followed by constraints to performance and then the recommendations are contained in section seven. The lecture concludes with some remarks and expression of gratitude to everyone who has made this journey possible. Theories of corporate performance. Several theories underlying the performance of firms I will highlight two of these theories that are commonly adopted in understanding corporate performance. They are the organization theory and the agency theory. The organization theory is the study of the structures of organizations. Four major theories contribute to the organization theory. They include the classical organizational theory, human relations or neoclassical theory, contingency or decision-making theory, and modern systems theory. Another is the agency theory. This is a popular theory that explains the relationship between the owners of a business and their agents. It is a principle that is used to explain and resolve issues in the relationship between business principles and their agents. Adenik into 2012. This theory underlies many of the studies on corporate governance. 
What is corporate financial performance? The financial performance tells investors about the general well-being of a firm. It is a snatch, snapshot of the economic health and the job that the management is doing, providing insights into the future, whether its operations and profits are on track to grow, and the outlook for its stock. It can also be viewed from various perspectives, depending on the objectives and expectations of the users of the information. What is common to all the perspectives is that it is a relationship between inputs and outputs with an objective to be achieved. Oholabi, 2018. Making a profit is a business's primary goal. A profitable and productive sector of the economy is better able to withstand adverse effects and contribute to the stability of the economy. Emmanuel Adenikinju Durasami Ayola Oladejo Kwabai and Otekunri 2023. Ultimately, the performance of these companies have an impact on the larger economy, hence the need to give attention to what informs the performance of companies. Adenikinju 2011. What is corporate governance? Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Over the last couple of years, the corporate world has experienced significant challenges following the Asian financial crisis and other accounting standards, scandals which have brought to light the performance of an effective institutional framework that would help corporate management increase shareholder value while protecting the interests of other stakeholders. Dar, Nassim, Orehan, and Yazi, 2011. The case of failure of large corporations like Enron, WorldCom, Tyco, Adelphia, Arthur Anderson, Lehman Brothers, Freddie Mae, and Fannie Mae, and in more recent years, Wells Fargo and Equifax in the United States of America were largely attributable to poor corporate governance practices. Bagat and Bolton, 2019. Similarly, organizations such as Goldman Sachs in the USA, Marconi and Northern Rock in the UK, Pamalat in Italy, Yukos in Russia, and Intercontinental Bank, Oceanic Bank, Union Bank, Bank PHB, Spring Bank in Nigeria, were discovered to be on the verge of failure before their national governments bailed them out of imminent collapse. Duke Tu and Kanpang, 2011. Thus, to forestall future problems, corporate governance frameworks have been established by several regulatory agencies and national governments across different countries, such as the Sabins-Oxley Act of 2002 in the UK and Nigeria's Securities and Exchange Commission SEC Code of Best Practices for Public Companies 2003, Code of Corporate Governance for Banks and Code of Corporate Governance for Licensed Pension Operators. Why the okay, 2009. I have considered issues of corporate governance in relation to capital structure, ownership structure, managerial characteristics, and corporate performance in my research. Capital structure. The term capital, the term capital refers to the proportion of different types of securities, both debt and equity, issued by a company. An optimal cap. An optimal capital structure is defined by an optimal mix of debt and equity for a firm that maximizes the shareholder's value or minimizes the weighted average cost of capital. Well, 1998. The existence of an optimal capital structure suggests that the firm's choice of financing mix between debt and equity matters. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. In the real world, every firm tries to maintain an acceptable balance between debt and equity through a process referred to as capital structuring. Capital structure and the risk of corporate failure. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Literature shows that a firm's capital structure matters for its operational performance. Adeni Kinju, 2002. A firm's capital structure decisions has implications on its expected earnings by altering its tax liability and probability of failure. The choice of capital structure has direct implications on the risk of bankruptcy. The tax shelter bankruptcy cost theory of optimal capital structure defines a firm's optimal leverage as a function of the distribution of future earnings, business risks, default costs, and taxes. A feasible implication of the TS BC is the existence of an inverse cross-sectional relationship between probability of bankruptcy and current leverage levels. 
The descriptive literature, ably summarized by Agency in 1976, identifies the causes of corporate failures. He categorized these factors into two broad groups, internal factors and external factors. Internal factors arose from bad or poor management transmitted through, first, lack of responsiveness to changes in technology, second, bad communication, and finally, malfeasance and fraud. He identified the following external factors. First, the pressure of labor unions, which may result in too high a wage settlement, causing the firm to pay its employees in excess of their marginal products. Second, pervasive government regulations sometimes hinder the proper functioning of the market system, distorting in the process its signals to corporate decision makers. Finally, influence of natural causes like natural disasters, demographic changes, etc., also has implications on the performance of the corporate sector. Aside the factors mentioned above, other causes are one, overtrading, two, undercapitalization and or inappropriate gearing, three, growing corporate overhead, four, strategic inconsistency, five, declining cash flow, six, rising sales without comparable profit margins, seven, neglect of periodic evaluation of enterprise operations and position. The general macroeconomic environment, the general macroeconomic causes of corporate failure reveal, reveal that failure is significantly linked to the prevailing monetary policy. That is, when you have a tight monetary policy, as in the Nigerian case, it increases the probability of failure. The investors' expectations about economic conditions the more negative these expectations, the more likely failures are to occur and the state of the economy. On the micro level, however, the age of the firm is said to have an important effect on the possibility of failure. Also, industry-specific slums or internal inefficiencies may also lead to corporate failure. Other authors such as Bonds and Becker, 1989, found that many of the firms that filed for bankruptcy in their study were too highly leveraged and were often in financial trouble before they knew it. That is, many of these companies had excessive debts in their capital structure. Ayodele 1990, in a related study, used a set of financial ratios as predictors of corporate bankruptcy among Nigerian quoted firms. The study concluded that the leverage and liquidity ratios represent historical reasons for corporate failure, reasons that are directly related to the excessive or unwise use of leverage. Therefore, showing support for the fact that gearing or leverage does matter for the value of a firm, as well as the possibility of corporate failure. It is also of interest to note that some of the identified potentially bankrupt firms have actually failed, although others managed to stay afloat, albeit they still exhibit the signs of distress. However, other firms can also be classified as being potentially bankrupt based on similar set of indicators, especially that of the market value of the firm being below one naira. On the basis of this classification, Adenik Kinju 2009 identified 33 companies out of the 184 listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, now known as NGX. Ownership structure and corporate governance. Corporate ownership and corporate governance practices have been identified as critical predictors of corporate activity and firm performance. Medzanis, Basoni, and Mohammed, 2019, Oye Rogba, Ola Leia, and Solomon, 2014. Ownership structure covers both the ownership mix and ownership concentration. Broad spectrum of ownership includes state, institutions, management, individuals, and foreigners. Firms are different in terms of ownership mix and also in terms of the degree to which ownership is concentrated among corporate insiders and external investors. The resultant distribution of ownership among different groups can impact on managerial opportunism, which subsequently has implications for managerial behavior and corporate performance. Hussein, Ahmad, and Hassan 2019 in their study explained that the structure of ownership either weakens or strengthens the relationship between shareholders and management. In the case of scattered ownership, management has serious threat of insecurity from outside shareholders. This situation gives rise to agency problems. Jensen and Mekin, 1976. Nevertheless, concentrated ownership minimizes the conflict between principal and agents. 
There are two contending schools of thought on the impact of ownership structure on performance. The first school argues that ownership structure does not matter for performance. The school attributes the failure of state-owned enterprises, SOEs, not strictly to ownership, but the absence of an enabling environment for them to operate efficiently. The proponents of this school contend that if the markets for products, factors of production, and for corporate control are created and function well, SOEs would perform just like their privately owned counterparts, Zhu and Wang, 1997. Managerial characteristics, governance, and performance. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. As explained earlier, in general terms, it is possible to identify levels of determinants of firm performance. The first relates to external factors that are beyond the control of the firms and are generally economy wide. Second, factors that are internal and under the direct purview of the firms. These factors include managerial efficiency, governance structure, ownership structure, which affect the ability of the firms to cope with external factors. Figure one provides a framework for understanding the structure of the relationship among various proponents of the organization. This is the corporate governance structure of most modern corporations. It shows the interlinkages among internal and external factors in the organization. It reflects the interplay between internal incentives, which define the relationship among the key players in the corporation, and external forces, notably policy, legal, regulatory, and the market, that govern the behavior and performance of the firm. Ishkanda and Shamlu, 2000. The board of directors is at the center of the system. The board is responsible for oversight of the management and ensuring long-term viability of the firm. The board is answerable to the shareholders and in some systems to employees and creditors. Figure one shows that relationship on the interlinkages between internal and external factors in an organization. Figure two shows how ownership structure, corporate governance, and managerial characteristics interact with other firm level characteristics to determine firm performance. The governance structure is influenced by ownership, laws, and charters. The governance structure has an impact on CEO characteristics since the board determines the selection, terms of compensation, and firing of the CEO. Similarly, the CEO can also influence the board of directors. The CEO has significant influence in the selection and retention of outside directors, as well as limiting the outside director's influence. In general, the outside directors owe their promotions to the influence of the CEO and are also likely to be more subservient to him. Thus, the CEO and the governance structure are interrelated. My contributions to scholarship. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. My contributions to knowledge with respect to corporate governance can be categorized into three broad areas. Capital structure, ownership structure, managerial characteristics, and corporate governance as they relate to corporate performance. I will discuss my contributions in these three areas in seriatim. My work in the area of capital structure revealed in Adeni Kinju 2005 many interesting insights on the capital structure of Nigerian companies. The capital structure of these companies testifies to the soundness of the financing decisions of the companies and how the company is managed. Some of, these, some of the findings were observed some of the findings that were observed from a descriptive analysis of the capital structure of these companies, while others were obtained from the model results. A review of the characteristics of capital structure of Nigerian quoted companies yielded a number of insights. Adeni Kinju 2002 and 2005. First, that Nigerian firms are funded predominantly by short-term non-interest bearing debts, especially trade and sundry credits, rather than long-term debts rather than long-term debt instruments. And this can be seen from figure three, where the non-interest the, the non um, schedules are the ones that are more prominent. This type of financing has consequences on the type of investment activities that could take place in the industrial sector and the long-term development of the sector. Second, despite levels of company income tax and price inflation in the country, firms use less interest-bearing debt than expected. In other words, with high levels of income tax and price inflation, 
One expects that firms would shift to relatively cheaper bank credits to finance their activities. Third, we also observed a declining trend in the contribution of owners' equity to corporate funding. The high flotation costs, the weak state of the capital market, coupled with a limited number of instruments available on the market, have, among other reasons, reduced the attractiveness of this source to most companies. Finally, profits and other funds generated from operations have assumed greater importance in financial provision. I attributed the observed trend to several possible factors, among which are the following. One, debt up to a point. This is said to be a cheaper source of finance than equity, and firms simply took advantage of this to increase their debt level. Two, flotation costs and transaction costs. These are usually quite high when new shares are being sold, which is one of the reasons why equity is said to be costly. Three, credit rationing. This has limited the use of interest-bearing debt, forcing firms to shift to non-interest-bearing debts. Four, the macroeconomic environment in the post-1985 period. The, deterior the deteriorating economic situation since 1985 has shifted companies' strategy from ambitious expansion to a survivalist one. Firms are more inclined to invest in raw materials to maintain existing production facilities and thus often result to short-term credits. The review of the capital structure of Nigerian firms gives some, some credence to the pecking order theory, which states that companies prioritize their sources of financing from internal financing to equity and consider equity financing as a last resort. This is because firms in Nigeria are likely to go for internal funds when there's need for expansion or for new investments at the first instance and then secondly debt. Companies only call for additional ejection of equity capital in the last resort. The analytical model on the determinants of capital structure also yielded a number of interesting results. In accordance with developments in agency theory, I found that the distribution of equity ownership among corporate managers and external block holders has a significant relationship with leverage. This provides support for the active monitoring hypothesis, which proposes that external block holders have greater incentives and an ab ability to monitor management, thereby reducing man managerial opportunism, which may otherwise reduce leverage to a suboptimal level in order to reduce management's non-diversifiable employment risk. This is also consistent with other, the studies by Baja et al., 1997, which found evidence that farm leverage is affected by the degree of managerial entrenchment, and most of their results indicate that entrenched managers seek to avoid debt. The empirical models also show that the index of business risk has negative and significant impact on firms' leverage. This implies that the higher the business risk, the lower the incentive on the part of the firms to acquire more debts. I also found inflation has a negative impact on leverage. This differs from the theoretical expectation which postulated a, pos a positive relationship as an increase in inflation is expected to induce firms to substitute debt for equity since the former has become a relatively cheaper source of business finance. However, results indicate that inflation actually reduces the willingness to incur more debt. This is possibly due to the riskiness of debt in a depressed economy. I also found that the size of firms has a strong and positive impact on leverage. This is consistent with both the empirical and theoretical literature as larger firms in general are more diversified and are likely to have a lower risk of bankruptcy and thus can sustain a higher level of debt. The models applies applied in my study also support the tax neutrality of capital structure as all tax variables were not significant. Profitability of firms could, was also found to have a negative impact on leverage. In terms of relative importance, the key factors that influence capital structure in Nigeria are the ownership factor, index of political risk, firms, market growth potential, and size of the firms. I also consider the determinants of business risks in Nigeria, and in particular, the impacts of leverage on business risks. My findings show that the measure of business risk is very important in empirical analysis. 
two indicators were used to proxy business risk. Taking the results of the two measures together, I found that leverage has a strong predictive impact on the probability of business failure. Highly leveraged firms have a stronger probability of failure compared to their counterparts. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, funds can be categorized as being internal or external. The components of internal funds are revaluation reserves and other reserves, while external funds are made up of debt and equity. The share of internal funds in total funds employed rose, by, rose over the period from 1985 to 1997. Thus, on the average, internal funds constitute about 20% of total funds employed between 1985 and 1997. Salami 2000 and Adenikinju 2002 show that internal funds constitute a small but increasing share of funds employed by Nigerian quoted companies. In fact, the Central Bank of Nigeria, 1998, reported on sources of funds for a sample of Nigerian firms, quoted and unquoted, showed that internal funds constitute over 75% of investment finance. This suggests the increasing importance of internal financial resources in the financial mix of the corporate sector. Figure 4 shows the external funds contributed. Figure 4 shows that external funds contribute a greater proportion to funds employed by Nigerian firms. On the average, almost 75% of total funds employed were obtained from external funds. However, this has been at a diminishing proportion out of the total funds employed. Adeni Kinju 2002 and 2007 found that debt was the dominant source of external finance, providing almost three over five of total funds employed. However, by the time we add revaluation reserve and other reserves to owner's equity, the proportion of shareholders' funds rose to about 45% in 1985 and about 45% and 44% in 1991 and 1997, respectively. This is shown in Figure 5. Debt can be classified by repayments horizon, that is long or short term, or by cost, that is interest or non-interest bearing. Elements of debt in Nigerian companies include deferred taxation, sundry and trade credits, and bank overdrafts. Adenikinju 2002 also showed that many companies relied more on short-term debt than long-term debt, which is contrary to what we expect from the theory, which says that small companies, possibly quoted possibly unquoted firms will rely more on bank loans rather than long-term debt because of flotation costs and problems of access to capital markets. Hence, it will be expected that quoted firms will make use of long-term debt. However, the reality in the Nigerian economy is the reverse. Quoted companies are making use of short-term debt, short-term debt offer in the form of trade credits and short-term bank overdrafts. Salami 2000 ad adduced two major reasons for the predominance of short-term debt in the debt portfolio of Nigerian companies. First is the restricted opportunity for borrowing in the formal financial markets and the limited financial instruments available in the capital markets. The second, the bond market of the Nigerian stock exchange is very thin, leaving little opportunity for active market transactions for the sale or purchase of long-term bonds. Second, the nature of investment undertaken by firms over the period is basically short-term. Most companies faced with a difficult and uncertain economic terrain have moved away from the expansionist fixed asset acquisition mode of the decade to a survivalist one. Rather than acquiring fixed assets, companies are placing significant parts of existing plants in mothballs, Salami 2000. Investment by firms during this period is predominantly in raw materials to keep existing facilities in service. The composition of long-term obligations reflects the fact that deferred taxation contributed about 1.5% of total funds employed, while long-term loans account for about 5% of funds employed over the period. Short-term credits accounted for slightly more than half of all financial resources employed with sundry and trade credits contributing more than half of short-term corporate obligations. Adeni Kinju 2002 provides a sector-by-sector -sector analysis of capital structure. Eleven sectors were used in the analysis. This include agriculture, automobiles and tires, breweries and building materials. 
Others include chemicals, conglomerates, construction, and food and beverages. The final three sectors are healthcare, industrial and domestic products, and publishing. And this is, can be seen in figure six. The first observation from the graph is the increasing importance of internal funds in sources of funds for all Nigerian companies, irrespective of sector operations. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, the implication of the aforementioned is that capital structure matters for survival in a depressed economy. The mix of financing is also a strategic issue at the farm level, Adenikinju 2009. My contribution in the area of capital structure and the risk of corporate failure. My study reveals that highly liquid firms are less likely to fail. Moreover, firms with high managerial efficiency are also less likely to go into bankruptcy, although it is useful to mention that this particular variable was not significant in all the models presented in the study. Similarly, my research also showed that capital risk structure and even the risk of business failure are affected by the general economic and political environment. This is consistent with the theory that debt equity decision is a response to current changes in capital markets and the economy. The implication of this is that piling of debt also exposes the company to a higher risk of failure. Thus, there is need for governments to put in place appropriate governance structure and institutions that will check the growth of debt by firms and encourage firms to carry out their activities in an honest and profitable and transparent way. The information in figure seven <clears throat> I move on to my contributions in the area of ownership structure. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, my work alongside my colleagues provided a detailed analysis of ownership structure in terms of public stroke private, individual stroke institutions, foreign stroke domestic, insiders slash outsiders, and examined the relationship of ownership structure with key indicators of performance. Adeni Kinju, Ayorinde, and Adeni Kinju, 2003. There's ample rationale for the departure of ownership structure from the anonymous, small, diversified shareholders that prevailed in the US and the UK and economic theory. This is especially the case where legal protections are ineffective. Ownership concentration and ownership structure in general can fill the gap by providing the functions of corporate governance and enhance promise fulfillment, management monitoring, and lowering costs of resolving competing claims. Dick 2000. Adeni Kinjo et al. 2003, in analyzing the structure of ownership of firms, established the following. First, the vast majority of Nigerian individual investors are small shareholders, and few are in the list of the te 10 top largest shareholders. This can be seen in figure eight. Second, on the average, ownership structure is highly concentrated in Nigeria. Third, the indigenization policy and privatization policy of the federal government did alter the landscape of ownership structure in Nigeria, as figure nine shows that only 8% of corporate shares were owned by the government. Figure 10. Figure 10 shows that most of the shares in Nigeria, about 37%, were owned by domestic individuals, followed by foreign institutions at 26%. Next is domestic institutions at 17%, management owned 10%, and staff less than 1%. Figure 11 compares ownership structure and ownership concentration in Nigeria and a set of countries, which are the USA, Japan, Germany, the Czech Republic, and China. Concentration was much higher in Nigeria than the USA, Japan and Germany, but was comparable to those in the Czech Republic and China. My research also investigated the impact of ownership structure on farm performance, Adeni Kinju Ayorinde and Adeni Kinju 2003. Findings showed that concentration ratio, CR, did not play a significant role in explaining performance. Most of the firms have high concentration index already, and thus concentration ratio may not be important in explaining variation in performance among Nigerian quoted firms. We also found that ownership mix had only marginal effect on firms 
performance, especially under the economic value added method. Domestic and foreign institutions had some degree of impact on foreign performance with significant effects. This suggests key role of external factors in determining foreign institutions. This suggests the key role of external factors in terms of foreign institutions on farm performance in Nigeria. At the same time, it was found that institutional shareholding exerted a positive impact on performance. Finally, our study did not support the convergence of interest hypothesis that internal shareholding is an important motivating factor. My contributions with regard to corporate governance and farm performance. Adeni Kinjo and Akonde 2016 considered the relationship between corporate governance and farm performance of quoted companies in Nigeria, focusing on the oil and gas sector, and found that the size of the company, financial leverage, and the ownership concentration of the companies on the average positively influenced performance of these companies. In addition, the intensity through the square of financial leverage tends to retard the performance of companies on the average. The study further recommended that companies need to improve on the quality of their directors in order to, re to improve firm performance. Adeni Kinju 2016 examined corporate covenants and capital structure decisions of selected Nigerian listed firms. Corporate governance is considered as having significant implications for the growth prospects of an economy because proper corporate governance practices reduce risk for investors, attract investment capital, and improve performance of companies. The study found that the number of directors has a positive and significant effect, impact on capital structure, while return on assets had a negative and significant impact. Adeni Kinju 2011 set out to identify the factors that influence corporate financial performance of Nigerian quoted oil companies. Findings revealed that leverage, working capital, and, dy and dynamics of growth are the most important determinants of performance in the petroleum marketing sector of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Adeni Kinju 20, 2018 investigated the role of business ethics and good corporate behavior on firms' financial performance. Results show that there's a positive and significant relationship between corporate revealed ethics, corporate applied ethics, and stakeholder satisfaction. My contributions with regard to managerial characteristics, corporate governance, and performance. Findings from my research confirmed that the background of the CEO has a negative impact on farm performance. However, all other variables, including sex, that is the gender, seem to have no significant impact on Tobin's skew. My research also showed that CEO compensation exerted a strong positive impact on farm performance. The policy implication flowing from this finding is self-evident. Firms must motivate their CEOs in order to encourage them to deliver good returns on shareholders' investments. It is therefore imperative that the salary and other perks attached to the position of the CEO, if tied to performance indexes, will be a useful tool in the hands of shareholders and stakeholders in ensuring greater overall company performance. I also found that the concentration ratio has a negative impact on performance. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. My other contributions to knowledge have been in the areas of trade liberalization and technological acquisition in the manufacturing sector. Economic development issues, oil price shocks, energy security, and the concept of tax mitigation. In recent years, I have also considered issues relating to gender. I presently chair one of the SDG groups in the university, which is on gender equality. My research in the area of gender have related to, to, whether, to understanding whether women actually perform better in certain roles than their male counterparts. My interest in gender was sparked by my research titled Managerial Characteristics, Corporate Governance and Corporate Performance, the Case of Nigerian Quoted Companies, Adeni Kinju, 2012. Findings from this research showed that gender did not significantly influence the performance of these quoted companies. One reason for this could be because very few women are actually, very few women actually get to the position of CEO of Nigerian quoted firms. My work together with my colleagues on the issue of trade liberalization has shed more light on the importance of technology 
in the ability of firms to appropriate the benefits from trade liberalization. Technology is one of the primary determinants of the competitiveness of manufacturing firms. Ayori Day, Adeni Kinju and Adeni Kinju 1998, and Ayori and Ola 2001 2002, with assistance of grants from the AERC, carried out research to determine the technological response of the Nigerian manufacturing sector to trade liberalization. The study made use of data from 94 firms covering three industrial locations in Nigeria. The results of the study were mixed. Osake Day and Adeni Kinju 2022 considered trade liberalization on industrial sector performance using data from countries in the economic community of West African states, ECOWAS. In this study, we found that trade liberalization measured by openness index and export taxes led to improvements in manufacturing value added. The findings lend support to the potential of the African Continental Free Trade Area, AFCFTA, in promoting industrial sector performance and sustainable developments in, in Africa. Babatunde Adeni Kinju and Adeni Kinju 2013 investigated the interactive relationships between oil shocks and the Nigerian stock market. This was the first study to examine the dynamic linkages between stock market behavior and oil price shocks in Nigeria. The study revealed that stock market returns exhibit insignificant positive response to oil price shock, but refers to negative effects after a period of time, depending on the nature of the oil price shocks. The implication is that there's an association between operations in the stock market and the performance of firms in the oil sector. Adeni Kinju, Akutsin and Adeni Kinju 2011 discussed issues relating to energy security in Africa and the possible roles for green energy. The study found that while it is true that Africa is a net exporter of energy to the rest of the world, the significant inequality in the distribution of energy endowments across the continent shows that the nature and depth of energy, of energy security issues vary. While green energy offers prospects for mitigating articles from their thesis, and some of them are listed below. Constraints to performance. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, corporate performance is important to different stakeholders, including potential investors, to including potential investors, adverse publicity brought about by the collapse of some firms and others that are under receivership. Since the global financial crisis of 1998, many investors across the world are wary of risks of corporate failure and the damage they may, that, they may, that they may bring. This is even complicated by the very difficult operating economic environments in Nigeria. Several factors, internal and external to the firm, can impact on the performance of firms. Some of the internal factors that were identified include leverage, firm size, firm age, managerial ownership, and blockholder ownership. Adeni Kinju 2002, Adeni Kinju 2012, Adeni Kinju and Adeni Kinju 2005, Adeni Kinju and Ayori Day 2003, and Adeni Kinju and Akonde 2016. The competitive pressures, high interest rates and exchange rates, and macroeconomic instability, which prevailed for the greater part of the 80s and much more of the early 90s, have combined to present a strategic dilemma for companies operating in the Nigerian environment, Adeni Kinju and Adeni Kinju 2005. Both financial and non-financial sectors are further bogged down by internal environmental constraints. In Weke, Adegbe, and Ogunda John 2022. Aside factors from the internal business environment, such as lack of capital, inefficient management, unprofitable expansion, mode of appointment of chief executives, fraud, liquidity of most companies and audit failures. Internal or external may affect corporate performance. A highly leveraged firm may stand the risk of distress than a low leveraged firm, while a high level of capitalization reduces a firm's exposure because equity does not need to be repaid, does not need to be repaid unlike debt. Yet a high level of capitalization will be tantamount to a foregone opportunity for additional profits through a judicious use of leverage. Many firms, irrespective of size, have experienced financial problems 
leading to mergers, acquisitions, and liquidations. The adoption of the Structural Adjustment Program in 1986 and the structural and the liberalization of the Nigerian economy, coupled with the devaluation of the Naira, altered radically the environment of doing business in Nigeria. The devaluation of the Naira at that time led to a spiral increase in the cost of imports, provoking sharp fall in capacity utilization across most Nigerian firms and closure of some firms. The increase in cost of production arising from rising import costs was further accentuated by the increase in infrastructure costs like electricity, petroleum products, and telecommunications in the aftermath of the removal of subsidies on these products. The rise in infrastructure tariffs, however, did not translate into improvements in the quality and adequacy of provision of infrastructure. Firms continue to bear the brunt of the poor quality and low reliability of infrastructure in Nigeria. This has provoked firms to invest in expensive private provision as backup or alternative source of supply to provision, to public provision. Recommendations on what drives performance. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I have shown in the, liter in the lecture that several factors, both internal and external, affect the performance of firms operating in Nigeria. While the focus of my research over the years have explained the internal structure and practices of firms, nevertheless, external operating environments that firms face are also very important. My recommendations towards improving overall corporate performance in Nigeria are highlighted in this section of the lecture. First, we have shown in the course of the lecture that capital structure and the risk of business failure are affected by general economic and political environments. This is consistent with the theory that debt equity decision is a response to current changes in capital markets and the economy. Literature suggests that there is an interface between the micro and macro environments. Therefore, government needs to put in place policies and programs that create an environment that is conducive to corporate performance. In particular, exchange rate volatility has significant impact on business earnings. Thus, government needs to reduce volatility of the Naira exchange rates through appropriate policies that would influence the supply and demand for foreign exchange. One way of doing this is to continue to diversify the production and export way base of the economy away from oil. Second, external block owners have a way of exerting pressures on management to finance business investment through debt than equity. The implication of this is that piling of debt also exposes the firm to a higher risk of failure. Thus, there is need for government to put in place appropriate governance structure and institutions that will check the growth of debt by the firms, but encourage firms to carry out activities in an honest, transparent, and profitable way. Third, there's a need to further deepen the stock market in Nigeria, especially in the area of long-term instruments. Fourth, in the NGX, that is the Nigerian Stock Exchange, the establishment of more platforms for trading other than securities, such as bonds, commodities, and derivatives, combined with other initiatives, such as the materialization of share certificates, e-dividends, direct cash settlements, and multiple account regularization, among others, will contribute to the growth of the Nigerian capital markets, attract more retail investors, and discourage the activities of Ponzi schemes in the market. Fifth, there's the need to expand the role of women in the managerial and ownership structure of the corporate sector in Nigeria. The woman gender is seriously disadvantaged in the current structure of the industry. Moreover, women have less access to credits, shareholding, and place of influence in the corporate and financial sectors of the economy. This should be urgently addressed. Finally, issues around data, both quality, quantity, timeliness, and cost of access to data should be addressed by the relevant regulatory agencies in the sector. The depth and poor quality of data continue to be major constraints in a competitive study of corporate governance in Nigeria. We have, we have had to invest a lot of time and other resources to be able to shed more light 
on the linkage between ownership structure, corporate governance, managerial characteristics, and farm performance in Nigeria. Conclusion. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. I have shown that internal factors play significant roles in the performance of corporate firms in Nigeria. My research over the years has shown that in Nigeria, capital structure has significant impact on firms' performances. This impact varies by sector and size of firms, as well as the type of shareholding structure that is in place. Furthermore, capital structure has no significant effect on risk of corporate failure. This finding, however, is due to the fact that poorly, managed, poorly performing companies have minimal access to the debt market. Hence, their debt equity ratios are low. We also reported that ownership structure and ownership concentration are important determinants of farm performance. Nigerian farms are skewed in favor of highly centralized ownership, ownership structure. Majority of investors in Nigeria account for small portion of total shareholding structure. Interestingly, gender seems not to have played any major role in corporate performance. We also found that CEO remunerations have positive impacts on corporate performance. We also found that CEO's stability and those that emerge through internal promotion have positive impacts on corporate performance. However, despite the important roles played by internal factors in corporate performance, my research has also shown that external factors or acts of God are important drivers of firms' performance. Nigerian firms have suffered and are still suffering from hostile external factors originating from exchange rate volatility, high inflation, difficult operating environments, policy inconsistency of governments, and poor infrastructure. No wonder that many reputable international companies that have been operating in Nigeria for a long time have suddenly exited from the country. In 2023 alone, more than six reputable international companies left Nigeria. They include Glasgow, Smithline, Sanofi, Bolt Foods, Procter & Gamble, and Unilever Nigeria. These companies exited Nigeria due to reasons that have resolved around difficult operating business environments and low profitability. The, the government must put in place policies to reverse this trend if the country wants to address the issues of poverty, unemployment, high inflation, and low economic growth. It is also important to revise the current corporate government, corporate government codes, corporate governance codes, to ensure that companies adopt best practices that will enable them to adjust, adapt, and mitigate the constraining external environment that is prevailing in Nigeria. Appreciation. I thank God Almighty for, this, for his goodness and mercy towards me. My Lord and my Savior Jesus Christ saved me and made me his own. Thank you, my father. I am very grateful to my parents, late Professor and Mrs. Christopher and Helen Ola, for their love and care and sound upbringing. My in-laws, late Prince and Mrs. Emmanuel and Margaret Alade Duya Adeni Kinju, Professor Akimbo Ade Shomoju, our siblings, Dr. Christopher Ola, Dr. Ayodele Ola, Mr. Olushe Yola, Mrs. Fola Shade Shiju Ola, Pastor Amos Alade Duye, Kunle Tayo Toye and Ajashin Adeni Kinju, Mommy Florence Alade Duye and their families. I especially thank Joshua Alade Duye for assisting me with typing some aspects of this manuscript. I thank my teachers from my primary school days, especially Mrs. Valerie Banjo, who was also my godmother. Mr. Oyetayo, my economics teacher at the International School, University of Ibadan. Mr. Akinti Lebo, my PhD thesis supervisor, Professor Ademola Oyejide, who took up the work of supervising my thesis when my first supervisor, Professor Afola Bin Shoyode, had to travel out of the country on sabbatical leave. Professor Akin Iwayemi, Sam Olofin, S.E.B. Ajayi, Afola Bin Shoyode, Doin Shoyibo, Kasi and Abdulgani Ugarba, Lure Emi Ogun, Aidi Kolo Amina, and others are deeply appreciated. I am appreciative of the love and support of my classmates from UI. We are called the UI Echo 88 class. They have been very supportive. The staff and students of the Center for Petroleum Economics, Energy and Law, formerly CPIL, but now DMPIL, University of Ibadan, have been caring, and for this I am grateful. 
Special thanks to Professors Olubusoye, Falo De Obute, and all other staff. I am grateful to Professor Timothy Olagbe Miro for believing in me as a young academic when I joined Bowen University. I thank Professors Dan Izebaye, A. Owoshekun, T. Aru, J. Faniron, M. Fawole, and Ogunjimi for their for their role in building Bowen University. I'm also grateful to Professor Joshua Ogunwole, Tosin Atobatele, Olai Walala, Oladele, and Mrs. Foluke Ayuba for their role in my academic career. The Provost of the College of Management and Social Sciences, Professor Lele Amusho, is appreciated. Likewise, the Program Coordinators of Economics and Accounting Programs. I thank Dr. Osakede for her love and prayers. The members of the Baduan District Society of ICANN and CITN are appreciated, especially the women wing of ICANN and CITN, that is Swan and Sweet. Uh, they have been very wonderful, and I am grateful to them. I thank, I thank my longtime friend, Prince Dr. Bade Oyedepo. I'm honored that many members of the New Covenant Church are here today. My pastor, Pastor Dele Adeyemi, Baba Ajao, Sister Debayo, Brother Ibuku Yekale, Sister Polariwa, and many others are here today to support me. Thank you very much, sirs and ma. I appreciate you all. My husband, Adiola, is one in a million. I appreciate the love and support of our children, Tolu, Dara, Ayodeji, Daniel, and Victor. I appreciate my in-laws from Tolu, Baba and Mama, Adeyemo, and the entire Adeyemo family. I'm grateful to everyone who has made time to attend this lecture today. God bless each and every one of us. Thank you. On behalf of the Vice Chancellor, we are presenting this commemorative award presented to Professor Lai Kaomulara Adenikiju, Professor of Economics, a presenter of the 11th inaugural lecture, topic Act of God or Looking Inwards, on Reveling the Drivers of Corporate Performance in Nigeria, signed by the Vice Chancellor, Professor Jonathan Ogobalola. And Mr. Batunde T. Adetona Registrar on this day, 9th January 2004. Congratulations. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. You may please be seated if you so wish. Ah, you may be seated, sir. Please, sir. Thank you very much. Um, it suddenly occurred to me that January salary hasn't been paid. So, thank you very much. Quick question. When Professor Adeni Kedju got to appreciation, how many of you silently sang Modukpe Onibu Ware? None of you did. All right, lovely. There are no Sonny Adi fans in the house. Thank you very much for that. Please, another round of applause for our inaugural lecturer. All right, very quickly, um, we'll now be coming to the end of this 11th inaugural lecture in Bowen University. It gives me great pleasure and honor to invite one more time Professor Olaiwala Oladili to give us the closing prayer as we depart. Oh Lord, we thank you for the excellence of your glory that has shown forth in this place today. We bless you for the grace and unction that you gave the lecturer and the blessings that the listeners have received which we believe that will go with us with your presence to make impact 
in the world to which we belong presently. So that as long as we are on this terrestrial plane, we will be about your business, blessing humanity to the praise of your glory in the name of Jesus. Go with us, O Lord, and let your presence be felt everywhere we go. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your patience. May I now please request that we all stand and remain standing as we take the anthems and the procession goes out. <laughs> national anthem. crave your indulgence ladies and gentlemen to please remain standing and in the hall as the academic procession makes their way out thank you very much the recession in reverse order led by our distinguished inaugural lecturer the vice chancellor the deputy vice chancellor the university registrar the University Bossa, the University Librarian, Chairman, Committee of Provost and Academic Directors and Provost College of Law, the Provost College of Postgraduate Studies, Provost College of Social and Management Sciences, Provost College of Liberal Arts and the Provost College of Agriculture, Engineering and Sciences. Ladies and gentlemen, Senate members most especially have all been invited to a special reception holding in honor of our distinguished inaugural lecturer at the Timothy Olagbimiro University Library. We wish you all a safe journey back to your destinations and Happy New Year. God bless you.